Hello everyone, this is Casper, and welcome to the fourth episode of my Umbraco tutorials. In this episode I'm just going to talk about the content tree, the structure, and how everything works, in, not everything, but how it works in Umbraco and how to just use Umbraco normally. Just first we'll start up Visual Studio 2013. And why hasn't it showed? Oh, not started up yet. Come on. There it is, right. From here we'll choose our test application that we made in video one. This is just a basic application with well we have nothing. Except for of course that I actually did include these in the first video, but then we'll include any more. Doesn't matter for now. Anyway, control F five to run the project. And just let it open a minute. Right. Now we go forward slash Umbraco. This will take us to the login page. Right, the username. The username we set right now was our email, so for me that's casper.anderson at hotmail.com. This is my email, and no, I'm not afraid of people spamming it or writing to it. You can find my email on many other groups like Facebook. My Facebook's not closed, so I'm not afraid of it, and that's why I'm listing it in the video. Um, and I don't use it as my primary email really anyway, so don't even bother. Right, my password was 1234, and we log in. And yeah, we might as well save the password. Okay, this is just a blank installation of Umbraco, so there's no pages or anything, but we'll get to that in the next video. So first, of course, we have the content. This is where all our pages with content and text and whatnot will live, but there's nothing at the moment, of course. Then we have the media. This is where we can upload videos, whatnot. This, these are the three videos I've made so far. And this, of course, is the fourth one. And then we have the settings section. Here we have our style sheets. We just create a style sheet. We have the tem we have templates. We have some partial views. We'll get into templates and partial views in later episodes. We have scripts. You know, jQuery, JavaScript, whatever we want to put in there. Scripts, knockout. We have a dictionary that we'll get to, of course, as well in later video. We have some languages in here. For me, this is you know English. Uh, don't know why it's United States. We could always just change that to United Kingdom, and or add another one here. Just press these, or just click away a minute. Right click, like in Windows, and press Create. Then just choose the language. For example, I'm from Denmark, so I'll press Danish, and then create that language. Um, and for some reason, it doesn't appear. So what we do is we right-click and say Reload, and it re or Reload Nodes, and it comes up. Okay. And then we have media types. We have a file that can be anything really. You know, .exe file, whatever. We have a folder. That's a folder, and um, we have an image or file could also be a video. And we have document types. There's no document type yet, but we'll get into that in the next video when we create our first page. We have the developer section. We have the data types. These are you know stuff like approved colors. There's a content picker. There's a date picker. A date picker with time. A drop down list. There's a label, for example. There's a media picker. A member picker. We have a radio box. Uh, true false boolean upload text box multiple all that stuff and we can create new ones but we'll, again we'll get in the, into that in a later episode we have some macros we have packages and here you if you when you first installed Umbraco if you clicked no thanks to create a starter kit site then you can just press here on install starter kit and you will get two choices up the txt or the overflow and if you install those then you just get some basic content and a basic um, template with a, a, the sort of course responsive and then you can read through all the code that's there to learn how that's made and that will teach you a lot as well if not you can install a local package that you've downloaded from any you know uh, you know ucommerce or whatever you've downloaded and then you can load into here but of course, again, we'll get into all, the, into all this in another episode. And there's also the Umbraco package repository. This is where all the packages are, that are for Umbraco are listed. 
Um, yeah, there used to be a lot, but ever since Umbraco changed to version 7, a lot of people have not used it as far as I know. So, there's okay, compared to WordPress, there's nothing, basically. But there's still a good fair bit. Um, yeah, and then of course you can show all your created packages, or you can create your own package. But again, I'll show that in a later video. Then we have users, and here we have the first user, that's me, Casper Anderson. And you can see here my name, I'll put in as that, my username, that now we can change. I, like, I always use Casper 6060 for games and anything that I use, so I could put that in there. Then I could change my password, right now it's 1234, I can change it back to 1234, uh, or not touch it at all. Uh, I can choose what role I want to have. Right now, I'll be an, uh, an administrator, and I could choose the language. Uh, and this is based on the languages that we added over the languages section, but more on actually what languages they support. And these are all the languages. So if I change this to Danish, then it would show all the content and all the other menus over here in Danish. But we'll leave it in English for now. Then we can disable me as a uh, disable my Umbraco access, but I haven't tried doing that when there's only one user. But I would not recommend doing it. We also disable the user again. Would not recommend doing that. And then we can uh, choose where I'm allowed to go. But again, I am the only I'm the super admin, so basically I should be able to go anywhere. Uh, we have user types. There we have a writer, editor, and translator. That's the uh, yeah. That's like kind of like permissions. We can then in here you can say what they are allowed to do. Are they allowed to change document type? And again, we'll get into all that later. And then we have user permissions, but we haven't really set anything yet. But of course, we could do that some other time. Right. Then there's members. Uh, yeah, a quick like informative thing. User. What what is users and members? A lot of people think this is the same thing. It's not. It's actually very different. Users are, you know, like I am a user of the CMS system. I can go into the back end office, I can change stuff around, I can disable users, I can disable members, I can do all that. Members are like you find at your local, well not local, but at any, uh, let's just take eBay or Facebook. They have members and users as well. A member is someone who signs up and then uses it, but a user is someone who has access to the admin panel, or is, as here the back office of Umbraco, and are allowed to to change stuff there. But the members can't see that, but they can have a profile with their name, their email, their password, whatever, their profile picture. Of course, users can have that as well, but they have access to the back office, and members do not. Uh, yeah, and users are usually in here for editing, 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 con, editing, uh, what's it called? Any settings, any content, media, whatever. Sorry for my gibberish there, I can't talk all the time. And uh, forms is to install Umbraco forms, but we won't be really be diving into that at all, really. Uh, not for a long time, anyway. So yeah, that was just a bit about Umbraco and what all the different nodes and the content tree are for. In the next episode I will be teaching you how to create your first page, finally, I know you all want to get started. And yes, this is where the fun begins, so thank you for watching and please like and subscribe if you like this video.